Tonight, the England-Scotland showdown at Wembley. Their Euro 2020 clash is about to get underway. The Tartan army has descended on London, many of them without tickets. More than 22,000 fans will be inside the stadium. It's the first time England and Scotland men's sides have met in a major tournament since Euro 96. This is a huge game. Massive game. Massive game. Biggest, 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 biggest in, in, in history. Biggest game of our life. 3 1, 3 1. You've gone 3 1, three I'm one. thinking 2 1. Uh, it's going to be good, yeah. it's going to be good. I'm pitch side at Wembley where the players have arrived for the clash that fans have been waiting for far longer than anyone expected. Also on the programme tonight. <laughs> Smashing a blue wall in Buckinghamshire, a stunning by election victory for the Lib Dems as they take a seat that's been Tory for almost 50 years. More summer uncertainty as Italy announces all visitors from Britain must quarantine for five days on arrival from next week. And the British woman who saved her twin sister from a crocodile attack in Mexico describes their ordeal. I was feeding it on, on its snout and it grabbed my wrist and my arm. So I had to um, beat it off with, with, the other, with my other arm. And I'm Martine Croxall. Join us for the papers at 10.30 and 11.30 tonight on the BBC News Channel for an in-depth look at all of the front pages. Good evening. Less than an hour to go now before England and Scotland face each other for the first time at a men's major tournament for a quarter of a century. The Euro 2020 match has huge implications for both sides. England will qualify for the knockout stage with a win, while Scotland are hoping for a victory to boost their hopes of reaching the next round. Well, let's go straight to our sports correspondent, Natalie Perks, who's pitch side at Wembley. Natalie. Well, Sophie, the weather today has been appalling, but the atmosphere inside here is electric. Like you said, just under an hour to go uh, till kickoff. Both sets of fans here know exactly what's at stake. England could qualify for the last 16 with a win. As you said, they're looking to build on that composed performance in the 1-0 win against Croatia. Scotland, meanwhile, lost 2-0 to Czech Republic and know that a defeat again here today would leave their hopes a little wobbly, although not necessarily turn. Terminal. Much is riding then on this for both sides. And if you look at the ties between the nation and the history, it adds up to an encounter with a special edge. For these oldest of footballing rivals, the Euros has brought mixed fortunes. But for fans, the wait is finally over. The weather hasn't dampened the spirits of the travelling Tartan army. Outnumbered they may be, but outsung, never. Scotland haven't won at Wembley in 22 years, but confidence, like the beer, is in good supply for both sets of supporters. What a support we've got down here. What is the boy talking? 30,000. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for what? The biggest game in our lives, I'll tell you. 3 1. You've gone 3 1. I'm thinking 2 1. Uh, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be good. good. Take over Wembley again. <laughs> we'll not be taking the goalposts home as this time. <laughs> Whatever yeah. happens, England yeah, is going England to win. England is going to win, man. Yeah. <laughs> England meets Scotland at Wembley. It's no wonder the sporting rivalry runs deep. It's the oldest fixture in international football. Bobby Johnston shoots, the ball rebounds, but Riley is there to finish the job. England and Scotland are one all. Since 1872, there have been some memorable results for both feet. Now's the time to flip the script. I wouldn't say underdogs, I'd say massive underdogs. You know, it's here, it's at Wembley. You know, England are a great team. Uh, they've had a great start to this tournament. Everything's against Scotland in a way. But sometimes that's the way we like it. You know, no one's expecting anything other than the Tartan army. England know another win tonight will cement their spot in the last 16. Gareth Southgate more than understands the significance, but wants his team to play the game, not the occasion. When we were growing up, 
the home internationals were one of the few games you saw live at the end of the season and England Scotland every year was a massive occasion now it's played less regularly obviously lots of the players are, uh, are friends within their clubs we know the rivalry but um, I think uh, yeah I have I certainly haven't felt the need to build that up with the players I, I want them to approach it like any other game of football and and focus on playing well a win for Scotland tonight would breathe life into their quest. Wales have all but booked their place in the next round. Which home nation will join them? Well, Scotland's men have endured a 23-year wait to be in a major tournament, and their fans are relishing being back in the big time. But Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has said the virus doesn't care about football and has urged the thousands travelling down to London to stick to the rules and be careful. Our Scotland correspondent, Lorna Gordon, is with some fans in Glasgow for us tonight. Lorna. Yes, old enemy clashes are always a big deal on and off the pitch and thousands are enjoying the sunshine and gathering in this covid secure area in glasgow to watch uh, the game which takes place in just under an hour's time thousands more have traveled to london many without tickets and nicola sturgeon is urging them not to exacerbate the covid situation scotland's tartan army off the train on the march, letting the old enemy know that they've arrived. For Scotland fans, games don't come bigger than this. Very confident, mate. The upset is coming. One no Scotland. We've no good tickets, but we've got tickets. We're hoping to get tickets. We've got uh, tickets. We've got, uh, we've got, we've got a boozer. Uh, and that's all the matters. That's all the matters. This, a tartan takeover of parts of London. The city's mayor asking fans to stay away if they don't have tickets or a safe place to watch the game. We've done it legally. We've what? followed the rules. People came yeah. down. We've stayed do? in the pubs. Yeah, England fans, the pubs, the restaurants, everywhere have been absolutely fantastic. Amazing. And so far, it has been mostly good natured. An early flashpoint, smoke bombs thrown by opposing England fans, quickly calmed by police. For those that didn't travel, no less passion and hope. Do his proud boys, we're here for you. You been there for us. Come on! Yes! 3,000 supporters there for the team in the football fan zone in Glasgow. All you need is hope, all you need is heart. Who cares about the stats? Who cares about the price of players? We're here. That's what is that, 23, 24 years? We're here, that's all that counts. See if we beat the English. Nothing's coming home. It's coming yes. right. Here we are. This oldest of football rivalries, such extreme highs and lows, and everyone in Scotland willing their team on. Lorna Gordon, BBC News, Glasgow. Well, because of COVID restrictions, Wembley can only be 25% full, but anticipation has been building all day. And the record books are on England's side. Uh, England have lost to Scotland just once since 1985. But fans without tickets are able to watch the match in special fan zones. Our correspondent, Danny Savage, is at an official fan site for us now in Newcastle. Danny. Yeah, quite an atmosphere here in the centre of Newcastle this evening. About 700 fans in this zone here behind us, all having table service. Most of them, they have to wear masks as well if they have to go out and about. If there's one thing, though, they expect tonight, it's a victory. They do not expect to come out of this competition as the underdogs. And here's what some of them have had to say. <laughs> Pre-match preparations begin early in Newcastle. Not long after lunchtime, confident England fans were warming up. No, for me, 3-4-0. 3-4-0 nil. Nil easy. England are that good and Scotland are that bad? Scotland are that bad, England are that good, yeah, easy. I think it'll be a very slow game, to be honest, but uh, yeah, we'll come out on top. 2-1 England. Definitely 2-1 England. 3-0. 2-0. 3-0. Way high. Not a lot is going to get in the way of the football tonight. Not even Anthony and Andrea's wedding day. Well, we're going to have a meal and all that, and then we're going for the air. We're going to see where the night goes with a few drinks and all that, and see hopefully England will win. 
So, you, so the football match is definitely on the agenda? Oh, yes, yes definitely, <laughs> definitely. Do you mind? Well, I haven't got a lot of choice. <laughs> Next door, pub manager Phil is up against it, a Scot in an English football supporting city. It's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Now the guys have been great. We're good all day. Good. Uh, um, we've had a mixture of Scotland and England fans in. We're usually very busy from the train station. From a mixture of both. So uh, uh, it's good banter. Many of them will eventually end up here, a city centre fan zone with a giant screen and carefully spaced tables. The majority of them are, are very responsive and, 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 and kind of do as they're told um, because, they, again, they appreciate being allowed out of pandemic, uh, out of their houses and, and being able to mingle and, and have a great time with their friends. And that novelty of having a big night out is something special. It's amazing to be in this atmosphere and be out of the house, be with my friends. And it's social distance, it's great, and we're safe. And it's just, oh, the atmosphere is amazing. Goal scorers of England versus Scotland games past are legend here. Will tonight become another remembered for years? Hopes are high. Danny Savage, BBC News, Newcastle. Well, it may not be full, but all the fans are so up for this. Now it's time for the players to try and drown out all that external noise. Many of them won't even have been born the last time the men's teams met in Euro 96. Now, England have made two changes to the side that beat Croatia, uh, both in defence, but Harry Maguire on the bench. Scotland have made four changes, a boost as Kieran Tierney makes it back into defence and fan favourite Billy Gilmore starts in midfield. And Sophie, I'll leave you with the words of Scotland boss Steve Clark. He said these players are used to playing in big matches and they don't come much bigger. They certainly don't, Naffy Perks. At Wembley, thank you. The Liberal Democrat leader, Sir Ed Davey, has said the party's historic win in the Chesham and Amersham by-election will send a shockwave through British politics. The seat had been a Conservative stronghold since its creation in 1974, but the Lib Dem candidate managed to overturn a 16,000 majority and win by more than 8,000 votes. The Conservatives said the result was disappointing and they'd now analyse what went wrong. Our Deputy Political Editor Vicky Young reports. Finally, the Liberal Democrats have something to cheer about. Victory in a leafy Buckinghamshire seat the Conservatives would never have dreamt of losing. Enough is enough. We will be heard and this government will listen. How are you feeling, Mr Davey? Very happy. And a rare chance for the Lib Dem leader to make the headlines. Do you know what happens when a really powerful, strong orange force goes against the blue wall? Let me show you. <laughs> Poll suggests just 7% of voters back his party, but Sir Ed Davey insists this isn't a one-off, and Lib Dems could knock down other Conservative strongholds in southern England. I think there's a shockwave through British politics. This wasn't just another Liberal Democrat by-election victory, it was one of our best ever. Uh, and on the uh, swing that we achieved, dozens of Conservative seats would fall to the Liberal Democrats the next election. It's all the Lib Dems we know are good at spectacular by-election wins and they will see this as a sign that they're the main challengers to the Tories in many southern seats, not Labour. And there are Conservative MPs concerned that there's been too much emphasis on the north of England and this is what happens when Tory voters feel ignored. Many here are furious about HS2, 